Hi YouTube. What you're seeing here is some LEDs. Brian Phillips here. Except they're not huge like this. There are three individual LEDs there. I'm going to unplug the power so you can take a closer look. So normally when you look at these LEDs on these strips, these LEDs um, have a current limiting resistor and then you would hook them up to 12 volts. Well in my case what I do is I detach the individual LEDs off the strip and they're very light and then they basically can be used as navigation lights on my airplanes. And what I can do is I can run them off a of one, two, three, whatever S I want, however many cells in series. I mean, there are limits because you can only get so much current limiting out of a resistor. Okay, so there's one S, there's two S, and there's three S. So you notice that there's a change in intensity, but two S is going to emulate for us very closely our voltage level that's going to be coming straight out of the receiver, which is what we're going to be using on our Spitfire today. And most of you know, if you watch my videos, that I've done this a number of different times. I'll go ahead and give you a shot of the Spitfire real quick here. And here it is. Oh, look at that beauty. So my plans are to put a tail white light and then up front I'm going to put a red light over here and a green light over there which should be standard um, obviously when you're talking about put a lighting lighting on airplanes you want to be able to see it navigation lights conform to special rules on real planes on my planes they don't necessarily conform to those rules which have to do with the area that you'd be able to see the red light, green light, and white light, so you can tell what direction the plane's flying. That's all hunky-dory, but the difference is you're flying from here, not from on the ground. So I want to be able to see these from over here. One complication on this particular model is the antenna makes it hard to work on this plane because it's fixed, it's glued in, and I don't want to rip it out. So I made myself this little block from like a DuraFly product. I just basically poked a hole with a tool and I can slide this in and over the top of the antenna which seems like a no-brainer but it's kind of a pain to work on this thing if you can't flip it over. So once you flip it over then you can uh, you can get to work and one complication like I was saying is I made these strike pads and they worked really good on the ailerons and then the wing tips. So I have to work around that, but it should be no big deal. I've got a 12 inch, 1 8 of an inch drill bit here. And as you can see, that'll get us from where I want the, the wire to be to all the way in. Unfortunately on the tail, the tail is about the thickness of the drill bit. Um, so I'm probably just gonna run them along the top and I'll leave a little bit of a loop. So anyway, that's the 10,000 foot view of what we're doing. And I'm going to get back to making the other two lights here real quick. Okay, so the way we start this is, obviously you have a, a soldering iron. I have a breadboard set up here. And the breadboard is just going to be used to help us do some testing on these lights as we go. Because obviously you, you're not going to get it right the first time. It takes a little bit of guessing and checking on size of resistor in particular. But beyond that, you have to cut these things off these strips, which these strips you can get at Hobby King or Ally Express or Banggood or wherever you want to get them. I am not putting a link to them. Find one that meets your budget and buy it. The cheaper they are, the crappier they are. But one thing you want to make sure they do is they have individual strips, preferably something that's flexible. My father-in-law got me some lights from behind a, a sign like a an outdoor sign and these ones are not flexible they are extremely bright and they're very high quality um, and once you get them out it's great but let me just show you the process it takes to, to pull these lights apart 
so that you guys can kind of learn from that. Not like we bought these, we just got them, you know, because they were not being used. So basically for me to open this up, I have to take my side cutters and rip this all apart. And there's some high quality electronics in here, and that's how you can tell this is way nicer quality stuff. But the point is it's a huge pain in the butt still to work with. And once you break that apart, then you can start taking the top off. Now the cool part is on these, they have these domes. And you can see how hard I'm pulling on that. It's very stiff. They have these domes in here, which are more or less part of the molding process. They're molded in, but they are separate. So if a guy wanted to, he can take and stick those over the top of an LED and dispense the light neatly. I'm probably not going to do that now, but the whole idea is just to show you kind of how much work this can be. You have to separate these. Ow. And then there's these prongs here, like that just bit me pretty good. So now you've got access to the actual LEDs. And when I say the actual LEDs, I mean they're actually a, a very strong silicone bilayer wafer board. And then there's the, the very low profile light. Just to give you some difference in size comparison, they're actually a little bit smaller yet than these LEDs, but they are significantly brighter and significantly higher quality. However, to get that light off of this board, you have to heat them to the point where they just about break in half. And so what's the point? You might as well not have them. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just show you what I do on these, which is essentially, I cut the wafer board I cut it away until it's gone and then I'm left with LEDs. And we'll do the same thing we did with uh, with that one, with this, and uh, fortunately for you guys, because it was an extremely boring video, my camera decided it was going to lose the video again, which it's been consistently doing and it's really frustrating. So now I'll show you as close a shot as I can give you. See, I've got that cut, and you still got the material in there. The backing material. And so there's a couple more cuts you've got to make, but you don't want to cut off your solder pad. So you'll just go just, just outside that. And those things shoot all over the place, so you may want to wear safety glasses if you're into that sort of thing. Okay, so now you're left with what's basically the LED. And just to prove to you guys that this will work, I'll go ahead and fire up, uh, I'll fire up the light. So let me go ahead and tin one more set of wires and I'll come right back to you and show you what it looks like. All right guys, so we got some new wires tinned up. These are just gonna be in parallel to the other lights, but they're running off of a current limiting resistor. So you don't have to worry about the polarity. Okay, so you can see that light's on and it's pretty bright. Same thing with this one that's been cut off the board. So now I could take and mark that so I know which direction the polarity is. So I'm gonna detach this so I don't accidentally short circuit anything. The black was on this side. So I'll just take this little LED and I'll just make a mark so I know which side to go to for my ground. And then uh, what I can do is I can look really close at this and one side is gonna have a bigger half and a smaller half and these ones are a little bit harder to see so but my plan is I'll probably do uh, two or three of these if I can get three of them then I'll do three if I can get two two will be satisfactory and these lights will be the tail lights okay so now I'm gonna take these side cutters and I'm gonna just cut just right there on the edge here and what that's gonna do for us is it's actually going to take most of the uh, the wafer off of it, which is extremely difficult to get the focus on. So I apologize, guys. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and just cut this thing. Okay. So now, just giving a quick review, everything's still intact. We didn't cut too deep. 
Now we can trim the tails on either side and we're left with a very small, very light, very bright and strong LED. So now we can sit there and lay it down on the, we've got our black mark and our other one is unmarked so we'll leave that. We'll go ahead and fire up the power here on our breadboard. I'm just moving a lead to jumper across the rails there. Now you won't hurt an LED if you apply the power in the wrong polarity as provided you have a current limiting resistor. Oh, and you know what happened? This is why we test guys. I couldn't tell when I did that initially, but the mechanical action of cutting off that bottom broke this LED so that's garbage now and that's part of the reason why I don't show you guys this step because it's a real frustrating process but it is part of the process I go through when I do these LEDs so I'm gonna go ahead and get to that step again and I'll come right back to you alright guys so out of that one white multi LED strip one of those sets, I got one LED, which is a huge pain in the butt, but it will be really bright and it's super light. So noticing that I was short on some of this black and white cable, I'll show you what I do to actually uh, get my, my cables that I use for the LEDs. Like I've said on the UMX planes, on the ultra micros and the real small light ones, I will use a different type of cable, which would consist of you know, like this sort of stuff, which is a motor winding cable. And that stuff works pretty nice, but uh, there are limitations there too. So, we're just going to grab one of these off. And this is just a, a parallel connector or par parallel cable from back in the day when we used to use parallel cables for printers and stuff. If you've ever been to uh, a factory or facility where they've got a lot of uh, computer stations, They'll almost always have like a computer recycling. And uh, if you ask the people that are in charge, they almost always let you just take this junk. Um, and you can see that that goes, there's one, two, so six, seven feet, something like that. And I have no interest in keeping this to salvage it, but if I really needed to, I could salvage the last little tips of those wires. And uh, you know, you've got your male and female 25 pin connectors. I have these connectors, I know how to make them, so I'm not really after saving these. But a guy could cut off a little bit more of a tail so they could be stripped back and used for a, a useful purpose some other time. Okay, so then you're going to take this cable that you've cut the ends off, and you can see all the strands. These ones are colored, so colored strands are kind of handy because you can differentiate between positive and negative. Um, which is helpful, but in my case, I kind of like the white and black because it's always just one positive, one negative, you know. So you just get yourself a little bit of that stripped off. And there you go. There you've got all these pairs in here, and they're all different colors, all sorts of different colors in this case. So that's kind of cool, but not necessarily what I had expected. Who cares, though? It was free. It didn't cost me anything. So, um, And it's super light gauge wire. Now, I like to keep some of this stuff because you can use that for other projects. And once you get enough of this stripped, you should be able to go ahead and run it off. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably just going to work a couple of... See, I'm just getting a slice into it, and then I open it up, and then I open it up. And that way you don't have to worry about chafing into the actual cable. Once you get enough of this, you'll be able to slide the whole thing off, but it's going to take a little bit of doing, so I'm going to pause it, and I'll come back to you when I have all these wires out. All right, folks, there you have it. All separated out. That was about as much of a pain in the butt as I figured it would be. Now I can uh, use those to solder onto the end of that white light. All right, so guys, I picked gray and gray and black. So gray and black will be our negative, and then uh, gray will be our positive. And the reason I picked those colors is because the colors of the airplane are gray underneath the rudder. So now I'm just taking and soldering this line onto the actual LED. And so as you can see, it's wanting to slip away from me, so I gotta tape it down or something. 
All right, so I got this piece of steel here to kind of hold this thing in place. And the reason I, I'm doing that is because there's some adhesive on the on this, and so it was holding it for my positive lead. Just touching this here with some heat. And now those are attached. Now we just need to validate that understanding. This is steel, so it will short circuit if I'm not careful. Yep, there you go. So there's your white light, guys. I don't know if you guys can tell how bright it is, but it's pretty intense. And uh, obviously we need to size the resistor. What I'm going to do is I'll move all this crap out of the way and I'll show you next to the other choice. Alright guys, so these LEDs are hooked up together. Um, so they'll both operate. So we're into the 2S setting. And just getting my eyes lined up with it. It looks about the same. In terms of intensity straight out. And then just as a simulation, we can put this up on top of it. This is not what we're probably going to use on this application. But you can see getting it into a, a dome like that is going to help to dispense that light out. And so my plan is, I'll probably go ahead and use this since I've got it built now. And then I'll save this for a project where it's impractical. Um, and then I can use some CA on the top of this to actually dispense that light out and diffuse it. Okay, so now I've got this sticky note that I use as my quick reference. Um, so it looks like on the green I'd be using like 180 ohms, and on the white I'd be using like 330 ohms. So I'm going to grab those out. Obviously these aren't going to be landed together, they're going to be landed individually. Uh, this one's going to be coming off the bind plug or just another servo plug. This is going to be coming off of uh, the aileron on the one wing. And then the other one's going to be coming off the other aileron. So they're not going to be hooked together in parallel. So now I need to do some sizing to figure out what size I want to do um, to ultimately get these things lit up on the wings and tailed respectively. So obviously I don't have the red one done yet. What I'll usually do is I just grab these things of resistors and they're all marked with their sizes. And I'll just come back here and find the one that's appropriate. And, uh, okay, so I got uh, 120 ohms, I got 150 ohms, here's 180. I've only got two of those, so I might go ahead and jump up a little bit and use something that I have more of, like 120. So I got a single 120 ohm. These are eighth of a watt resistors. So I'm going to put that between the green uh, and the green negative and then the negative strip on the breadboard and then I'm gonna hook this up okay so we're real bright that's great but my guess is this thing's gonna get a little hot and if it gets hot you don't want to use it because it's just gonna deteriorate the performance of the LEDs very quickly um, and you also want to make sure that the LEDs themselves aren't getting hot and Surprisingly enough, it's really not getting hot, but you can see that it's very intensely bright and uh, you can see from a lot of different angles, but it's mostly shooting out one direction. Well, when you put the CA on there, it's going to diffuse the light in lots of directions. So surprisingly enough, it's not getting hot. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the same thing in on the white one and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get some red ones built to work just like our green ones here. And then I think I'm gonna to try to get some more white lights so I can have more uh, light diffused out from the tail of the plane. The tail light's very important on these planes, so. All right guys, so there you have it. You got three white and three green. Now I just gotta get the red done. It's not part of the first video that got screwed up today. I showed how I do this, which I've actually showed how I do this a couple of different times, so if you want a more detailed view, just watch one of the other videos that I've done on LEDs. Now these things are supposed to be run on a 12 volt power supply, so I basically take and cut it between two strips. The red ones, for whatever reason, are really vulnerable to damage, and you can see that they there's three uh, red LEDs housed in this material, this like protective coating. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut those apart.
and I'm just going to take and peel off this little protective coating and it will come off a little bit like the backing on a sticker um, but it won't be sticky just kind of get that started and it basically just peels off okay this is the current limiting resistor if you were running on 12 volts and these are in series so mine are going to be in parallel so you can't just use that unless you want to try to redesign the whole circuit which I'm not doing okay so then basically what I do is I just turn around and take my scissors sharp scissors and I cut near but not totally off the tail and then I take and I cut it the other way and I trim the sides so you can see the cathode and anode on these there's one side that's real big and one side that's not so big and that'll tell you kind of directionally which side is which so one of these is a negative and one of these is a positive so you're basically going to trim them down leaving room to solder a wire and keep it in mind that these are going to be three in a row just like we've done so the idea is you kind of want to just lay them out there and then as you get them cut out you can line them up as needed just keeping in mind these things are soldered to the bottom so it's really kind of tricky to get to the bottom without damaging these LEDs by heating them you could take them off but unless you have a more robust LED you're not going to have good luck doing it you might get one out of six or seven of these to come off um, so I've just determined that it's easier to just try to do it this way just kind of line them up in a row make sure you get the cathode and the anode lined up it doesn't even matter which sides which because you're going to do a test here in a minute for polarity okay and if you look real close this is a 331 ohm resistor but that is not going to do us any good on this circuit because these are running in series and we're not running these in series because then we'd have to have wires going back and forth all over the place it's going to be a very difficult soldering job anyway and then you add that extra layer of complication and it just gets to being really difficult to do and uh, like I've told you I save things like that for a project someday I'll need like 20 of them and then I'll have them there when I'm ready okay so now these are lined up in a row and uh, I need to test for polarity but you can get a look at that real quick you can see how I've just stuck and lined them up in a row so then the positive and negative will go along those but <clears throat> For the moment, it's just going to be for testing. So we're going to test this next. Okay, so I've got this wire hooked up with a 180 ohm resistor on the negative side between ground. So obviously these are charged now, or these are going to be charged. And what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing one of these off of the metal so I can test for polarity. So that's not correct, so the negative is going to go to the bigger side of the LED. And then this should light. Yep, there's red. Okay, so you see how it's glowing, guys? Okay, so the negative side is going to go on the bigger side. So now I'm going to unplug my power so I don't accidentally short circuit since these are exposed. And then the negative side is going to be pointed toward me, which is what I already had laid out. But now we know that. Okay, and as you can see, it didn't hurt to plug it in backward. I mean, obviously, it's always better to get it right the first time, but it doesn't hurt it as long as you have your current limiting resistor in series with, uh, with the ground. Or with, the, or with the power side, it doesn't matter. Just so long as it's in, in between the connection to your power supply. Okay, so I've got those in there with just a small gap, but that's not going to matter because I guess technically I need to take the backing off. So I'm just going to hold them down like this with this piece of balsa wood, and they're just not cooperating very well. But I'm going to pull the backing off, 
once the backing's off, I'm going to stick them in a row, a nice neat row. And that's going to make it so much easier to work with these little things because they, they like to slip and fall and slide all over the place. To be honest with you, if I could buy them small like this, I would probably do that, but I know that they come on strips as well from the factory. So I don't know that that would be of any great savings in terms of effort. But now I can sit here and align them using my knife. Okay, so the next step is to take my tinned leads, which is this, and I'm going to go ahead and lengthen those a little bit. This was leftovers from my last LED project, which would have been for the bird of time, if I recall. And so they're already tinned. Yep, these are already tinned. So they should be good to go right away. Looks like I need a little extra length strip, though. But this is the process. It's a humongous pain in the butt. And if you really don't care about lighting on your planes, then you probably don't want to do it, because it is a lot of work. I can... Every time I get a new plane, I think about having to do this, and I think, oh, what a pain. But at the same time, if you like flying your planes at or near twilight, or even beyond twilight, you're going to need to do something to be able to see them. And if you do something consistent like this, you can pretty much fly your planes after dark if you needed to. Which, I guess between you and me, you don't really need to fly planes after dark, you want to. Okay, so I'm going to tin these. And you want it to be really chunky and got a lot of, you want a lot of solder on there. Because that solder has to bridge onto those crappy connection points. See, that look, like that blob would look horrible, but see, that blob isn't going to stay there. That's going to get cut off. So now my first step is to just knock that little bit off, because you don't want it to be a huge mess. So now we're basically going to bend, bend our lead. And get up there. I'm probably going to try to move you guys so you can see better now. Alright guys, we'll try that. We'll see how that goes for a little bit. Okay, so basically we've got the black lead needs to be toward us and the positive lead needs to go away from us. And these are de-energized right now. And you do need them pretty well aligned or you're just going to fight the whole time trying to get the, uh, the solder to to stick. Okay, once you heat this up, keep in mind that this, it's going to want to spin and stuff. Depending on how aggressive you get with it. And if you heat this too much, they will they will just melt. So you just have to kind of play it by ear and be careful. Like I said, the red ones are the worst. I don't really understand why. But they've just historically given me the most trouble. Maybe it's because I always end up doing them last. I'm not sure. So we're just basically heating this and more or less put, pushing the connector or pushing up against the connection with the soldering iron, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to test our connection and uh, it's going to be pretty easy to do that but I do have to get this pulled up off of the metal surface because we don't want to short our power supply. In this case it would be a LiPo so that would not be a good idea. See, and now it's already broken off here, so we're going to go right back to it with soldering iron. Ooh, that looked like it got. It got it done, I think, that time. It's always hard to tell. And then that little black tool that we were using earlier is a, is a tool that kind of helps because you can manipulate the hot wire while it's still hot. Okay, let's see how we look. So like I said, we gotta pop this up so we can get it away from the metal area. It looks like that last one's 
pretty much not going to work right now. Once you get this as an assembly, then you can hold it up and do it like this. So I'll plug this in. Hey, look at that. So we got one for three. That's pretty crappy, but not uncommon. So let's just make sure we didn't damage the other two. Yep, okay, so the middle one's working, just not making contact yet, and the last one's working. So we'll just basically hold it, unplug our power. I'm going to come down to the, the battery, and I'm going to plug it in as though it was a 1S connection. That'll make it less intense so that it's a little easier for us to see as we work. Okay, so we got it plugged in now. Okay, so now I just need to take my soldering iron and just kind of wherever we're, sh we're not making contact, I just need to kind of get a little bit of heat to it until it turns on. Let it cool just a little bit. Oops, that one's going to want to fall off. I knew you would do that to me too. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to somehow support the middle one until it makes contact, which means we're probably going to have to redo this, this end one. Very awkward, guys. There's no getting around it. I'm going to actually pause it and finish this real quick. So there you have it, guys. Next step, we're going to start installing them, and that will be on part two of the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.